Okay. Hey guys, it's Miss Michaela, and I brought a guest, Miss Laura. Um, welcome back to Book Connection. So Laura is with me in the Youth Services Department mm -hmm. at the Downtown Huntsville Library, and she is a history buff that is also majored in history. So for today's theme, we are going to talk about our favorite history books. Yeah. So <laughs> we're going to do things a little bit differently today. Um, instead of just one of us presenting kids stuff and one of us presenting adult stuff, we both chose two from each category that we love. So, Laura, since you are our guest today, if you would like to get us started. Uh, sure. Okay. Um, I'm starting with an adult choice. Uh, this is... Agatha Christie's Secret Notebooks by John Curran. Um, John Curran was an executor, I believe, of the Agatha Christie estate. And after she passed, he got access to um, the estate and all of the notebooks that she wrote in when she was creating her books. Um, so this goes into, you know, what was in the notebooks and why she used notebooks in the first place. Um, I thought it was pretty fun because um, I've always been into Agatha Christie books myself, and there's an, one I need to read. It's called Halloween Party, coming up for the month of October for Halloween. So I'm looking forward to reading that one. Um, but what I found really interesting about her notebooks in general is um, she wrote a lot of scribbling, and you wouldn't always find book uh, information about her stories in there. You'd find like grocery shopping lists or um, just like poems or anything like that, but it really goes into the process of how she she created her stories and similarities in a lot of her stories. She was a little bit of a romantic, so I always really enjoyed her. So um, why did she keep her notebooks? Um, that's how she really plotted things out. Um, if she thought, you know, kept the lists in her head of all of her suspects and characters without getting them confused with each other. Um, and I, she usually wasn't much of a plot kind of writer. She did more, um, I guess, characters. Um, but she is really known as the queen of mystery for a reason. It goes into a lot of the reasons why. Um, and for my second adult title, I chose You Never Forget Your First. A biography of George Washington, the best president. <laughs> it's by Alexis Coe. Um, this has the distinction of being one of the only general biographies about Washington that was written by a woman. And it really goes into a lot of details about why history is sometimes seen as boring to a lot of people. They don't connect to it. And I remember I was telling you about this book you were talking about all the lists that were in the books. Like yes, the uh, it starts out with some fabulous lists. The pros and cons, well, um, well, it talks about a lot of the, like, the truths versus the lies about George Washington. Like, uh, like he never told a lie. Obviously, he did. Um, then, like, his teeth. They talk about why people think he has wooden teeth. He really didn't have wooden teeth. And... Um, what my favorite part about it was is uh, this author talks about um, all the male authors of uh, George Washington, like Ron Chernow. Um, it, she calls them thigh men of dad history, is how she refers to them. And that's because they always refer to how George Washington looked on a horse, like, oh, his thighs were so presentable on, the, on that horse. Um, but I, I don't know how to explain my admiration of George Washington in a... I save lives. Yeah, well, <laughs> okay. In a precise way of describing George Washington. But he was aware of his faults, and he did his best to um, work with those and control those and deal with so many crazy people. So <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> um, it's a good life skill. Yeah. Yeah, we use it all the time. Um, so along the same lines, but for a kid's book title, I chose The Notorious Benedict Arnold, A True Story of Adventure, Heroism, and Treachery by Steve Scheidenkin. And this is a biography about Benedict Arnold, um, known as you know the biggest traitor in American history. 
But it really goes into, before he did his big traitor's act during the American Revolution, he was actually a war hero. Uh, he actually, he got wounded at the Battle of Saratoga and actually won that ba battle for uh, the Americans. Um, but I like seeing sides of people that a lot of people don't. So I appreciated that uh, Scheinkin gets into why Benedict Arnold was the way he was and why he did the things that he did. So I appreciate that. Um, my other one is a little, well I guess some people would not say that this was as um, historical, but uh, sure. well it's 13 Alabama Ghosts and Jeffrey by Katherine Tucker Wyndham. I consider this historical because a lot of her ghost stories are based in historical characters and places. Um, and one of the reasons that I chose this one was because years ago, my grandmother and I would watch uh, Catherine Tucker Wyndham at her storyteller events. You know, she would do that in Selma. And she had a VHS uh, where she went to each of the locations for these ghosts and told the story at that location. So it really added the atmosphere of the ghost, so she was right there. My favorite one is probably um, The Red Lady at Huntington College. And the basic idea about The Red Lady at Huntington College is that um, right after the Civil War, a, a northern young lady went to college in the south at Huntington College in Montgomery. And she was pretty much despised at her school for being a northerner in a southern school. And so she never went out, never did anything. But she got so lonely, she ended up killing herself in one of the dorms. And it said that she haunts the third floor. And she always wore red. Everything was red. Her, her stuff in her, her room was red. Her gloves were red. Her dress was red. But everything was red. And after she died, people would say that she haunted the halls, torturing the people who lived there because they were mean to her. So, I don't like know. A good revenge yeah. story. Yeah, it's a, it's a revenge story, but that that would be my last uh, well, historical choice. The paperback book. The problem, but we, we <laughs> figured it out. We figured it out. Oh, those were okay. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. I, I hope it didn't bore you too much. But keep going. I totally want to read the um, the George Washington book. Oh, it's a hoot! It's really funny too. It's yeah, that's one thing, too, also about it, is um, a lot of biographies are a little dry. Um, five men of that history were a little dry. They don't get to the funny parts of historical characters. All about the thighs. <sighs> it's all the thighs. So, she wasn't into the thighs as much, so. Uh, I mean, everybody's got their favorite, you know. Yeah, yeah. So. What you got? <laughs> So, um, I'd like to start with a question. Did you enjoy history when you were in high school? Um, well, the thing was, when I was in high school, a lot of the history classes were uh, taught by coaches, which yeah. a yeah. lot of the time that just meant we were doing um, work from books. Direct from the books. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, it wasn't really alive, was it? <laughs> no. I, I did not enjoy history as it was taught, so I actually did not even really try historical nonfiction until I tried this book. It's called Lies My Teacher Told Me by James W. Lowen. Lowen, sorry. Um, you've read this book, right? I think I've read parts of it, yeah. So the author actually reviews several different textbooks that are used to teach high school history, and he points out the inaccuracies, um, whitewashing, and the reason why most kids aren't interested in history, and it's because, like you said, it's taught in a very dead way. So this is from my YA section. I actually listened to the audiobook of this originally, and I listened to it with my daughter in the car, and she enjoyed it, and history is taught pretty much the same way to her as it was when I was a kid. She's now 15. Um, as we were listening to this, she would like have me pause every now and again, like, Mommy, is that real? Um, to be fair, uh, there's a lot of history that's occurred in the United States, so it gets edited down, but it is still problematic, some of the things that are cut out. Um, 
like the whitewashing, uh, the racism, and you know, just different aspects that they kindly left out to make it seem a bit more pleasant than it really was. Mm -hmm. So if you're like me and you did not enjoy learning about history as a child, then maybe, you know, try finding your own reading materials because there's a lot out there that's just been researched a bit more thoroughly. Um, one of the things that I didn't really learn about in history was FDR's New Deal. Um, we kind of just learned that it created jobs and saved lives, and that was pretty much it. Mm -hmm. So I enjoyed reading and would like to recommend to you Fighting for the Forest by P. O'Connell Pearson. So in this book, the author discusses the development of... Ah, I kept it standing. Yes! yes. <laughs> The, oh, now I have to pull it back so I can get the full title. The Civilian <laughs> Conservation Corps. Can I do it a second time? We'll see. Mm. There we go. Yes. So the Civilian Conservation Corps was developed because FDR, as well as his cousin um, Theodore Roosevelt, truly saw the importance of preserving nature. Um, so this project was dedicated to developing and clearing up and just protecting um, national parks and forests and also soil conservation. So if you're interested in hearing a bit more about that and how the United States started their crawl out of the Great Depression, um, I would recommend this book. It was really fascinating. I learned a lot. Um, also, this author is sure to keep things fair. Um, so she still talks about the racism that occurs because it was, you know, 1930s. So yeah, it's still there. Um, it's a pretty easy read. It has lots of fun facts in it. Um, I found it very interesting, even as an adult reading. So give it a try. The next book I would like to share with you is Never Caught, The Washington's Relentless Pursuit of Their Runaway Slave, Ona Judge, by Erica Armstrong Dunbar. That's very familiar to me. Yeah. <laughs> it was really good. Yeah. Um, I listened to the audiobook of this, and just like the cover says, it's the story of Ona Judge, who escaped from the Washingtons um, towards the end of George Washington's presidency. Um, she... Wait, what was it? So when they were living in Philadelphia, there was a rule at the time where if a slave was there for at least six months, they could try to uh, claim their freedom. So Washington set up a rotation where he would send them back and forth to Mount Vernon from Philadelphia um, so that they could never do it. Um, when it was getting close to the end of his presidency, Ona realized that her opportunity to claim her freedom was now or never, and she got out of there. Um, she faced a lot of hardships, but she never had any regrets because her freedom was worth it. Um, I really enjoyed it. There, I listened to the audiobook version again. Um, it's available on Overdrive, and the narrator does a really good job of keeping things interesting. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, there's also a youth reader version, but this is my adult choice, my first adult choice. My last adult choice is An Indigenous People's History of the United States by Roxanne Dunbar Ortiz. Sorry. Um, so this is actually book three of a series from Revisioning History. So the overall project is dedicated to telling U.S. history, the story of U.S. history, from the perspective of people that are un underrepresented. So um, there's also the queer history of the, of the United States. There's also the disabled history. There's a black and Latinx. Um, there's soon to be a black woman's history. But... I really wanted to read this one, A, because we have the audiobook in Hoopla, you should check it out. Um, but because in US history, we never really learned much about indigenous peoples. So it was important to me to learn more about it and to learn the ways that they tell their own history and their own voices. Um, so it goes over the rich cultural history that they have before colonizers show up. Um, of course, it talks about what happens once they did show up, um, the genocide and 
just everything. It's a hard read. It's very sad, of course, um, but it's worth learning. Absolutely. Um, so highly recommend. This is soon to be cataloged. Um, not quite available yet as book form, but again, available on Hoopla as an ebook and an audiobook. So what was your favorite thing that you learned from history that you got to learn, like from reading your own materials rather than required reading? Oh, um, well, <laughs> good yeah, question, I like actually. Inside people. Hmm. I mean, there's a lot to think about, um, because like you said, you only learn a certain way. Yeah. When you're in school, you're learning, oh, these certain people did this, and then they did this. Very timeline. Yeah. But um, I guess the fact that history is very, um, very much like a soap opera. Yes. And, <laughs> and um, I'm also very big into historical movies. And they're very notorious for being inaccurate, which is very confusing to me because... The history itself is so it's, interesting, there's no need it's to... It's complex yeah. enough without yeah. changing a lot of things. So I think, um, well, I guess that's a roundabout way of answering, is that uh, the complexity in the characters involved in a story, um, there are actually people involved, it's not just yeah. times and dates. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was my favorite thing about reading, like, historical books, like, in my own time, was that it did make the people I was reading about into mm -hmm. people, because you really don't get a sense of that just from yeah. learning in school, so. And yeah, there's a variety of people involved, too. It's not just um, one narrative story of one type of people, but yeah. more than <laughs> one. <laughs> there's more than one. Always. Yeah. Um, so, parents, if your kids are, you know, hating learning about history and just suffering from the depths of their souls, we can relate. Um, but also, come check out what we have at our libraries and in our digital libraries as well. So, did you have anything else you wanted to add? Um, well, if you ever have a hard time getting into, like, a certain time period that you're studying, I would probably recommend... Um, I just talked about historical movies, but go ahead and grab one of those historical movies that may be like not as accurate as it should be and see if you can find the differences between the two. Because I know we have several um, historical movies that we can have checked out too, um, just to compare the two. Because I there are, um, oh, well, let's see which one. There's a, a TV show called uh, Turn Washington Spies, which has Benedict Arnold as one of the main characters. Mm. And it really kind of gives you an insight into um, him as a character. And this would be a nice, like, re read along to it, I suppose. Yeah. Also, there's, if you're a kid, uh, the American Girl doll books, they have pretty good historical actors. They mm -hmm. various time periods. Mm -hmm. Dear America. Yeah. Yeah, Dear America journals and diaries. So many. Okay. Well, I can feel myself wanting to ramble, so I'll quiet down now. But thank you for <laughs> joining us. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And see you next time. Bye.